you guys just go ahead and start with questions. Yeah, but hey, I'll first start off with, I just want to congratulate the 12 uh, nom nominees for the uh, Win Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, I believe, that were announced today at halftime of our game. Is that correct? You know, and uh, just really excited uh, to see Paul, Paul Sandiford's name it, it, it is one of those 12. It's a, uh, a man who's, who's uh, dear to my heart. He gave me my first opportunity uh, in coaching down at Western Kentucky. Uh, he, he's the only retired women's basketball coach that's gone to three Final Fours. Uh, he, all, he also won a junior college national championship. Uh, was national coach of the year that 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 year at, at Lewisburg that is not in our, our Hall of Fame. So I'm hoping uh, that that this is going to be his year because it's uh, what he did back for our game is it, something I, I a lot of people here might not know. I know Nor Linwood. Uh, you know back then they called him Buster. Buster. But uh, you know in in '85 I think that's when uh, they played Texas. It did it did a little arena. When Texas was one, I think Western was two at the time. It was a packed house back when it, it was hard hard to get a packed, a sold out crowd like we had tonight in women's basketball. But Paul figured out a way to do it, uh, and then they actually won that game to, to to go to the Final Four. So, just really excited for all of them, but uh, especially Paul Sandiford uh, because I, I I just know he's, he's really been deserving of this honor. Jeff, if you would, uh, the game from your perspective. <laughs> I mean, we just came up a few points short. So I, I thought I thought our kids played hard. I, th I thought it was a really good basketball game. Uh, you know, if you look at the score and you're like, oh, it's a 14-point uh, game. I mean, if you're there, you know it's not. It's a, what, a two-point game with about a minute 45 left or so. Uh, our, we fought. I mean, we had some ob obvious foul trouble. Uh, but we, we continued to just go out there and grind it out. I was really proud of it. It's a one-versus-two game, and I, and I think it looked like a one-versus-two game. You know, I think you go on the road and play in an environment like this, I, I, I thought our kids were, were, were fantastic. We have a, a, a lot of room to grow. There's no question about it. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to leave here upset or devastated. It's, uh, you know, it's a game I thought we had a chance to win. We didn't. Now we've got to learn from this, pull, pull some film, and then uh, get ready for a really good Georgia Tech team on, on Sunday. How about the performance of Durr tonight for you guys? I, I, I thought you played really well. Uh, you know, she 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 not shoot shoot shooting a three as well as she has. But uh, overall, I thought you know she attacked the basket. I kind of challenged her a few times because I, I thought she was a little too unselfish at times coming off the ball screen. And I'm like, hey, look for your shot. But she grinded it out. She she was out there competing, and uh, I was really proud of her. She had a big shot, 30 percent in the first half, 59 in the second. How much of that was? Maybe caution caused by your foul problems. Uh, um, uh, unfortunately, I think that was a big part of it. And I kept trying to challenge our kids. You, you, you can't worry about it. If you foul out, we foul out. If we have to leave at the start of the fourth quarter because there's nobody left, we just we'll, we'll get home early. Uh, but it, you know, then all of a sudden you start getting real tentative, and we we just did not do a very good job defensively in that second half. And I think that was a, a, a part of it. But we gave up a, a, way too many offensive rebounds. Uh, areas where I, we did a great job on the first shot, challenge him, and then just didn't turn and put a body on somebody. Uh, and that, that led to a lot of second chance points. I mean, you look at them, they, they had 20, uh, 20 second chance points. Jeff, would you comment on the lift you got from Mikasa Robinson? She played, she played fantastic. You know, it, it's a grind. Uh, I've, I've said it all along, you know, especially for freshmen. It, you come in, you're, you're the best player your high school team, you're one of the best players in your state, you know, top uh, uh, 50 ranked, and then you get to college and all of a sudden it, it's a whole new ball game. It's like, man, everybody's good. And uh, she's just been grinding it out every day in practice. It's, she's in there early, she's working on her shot, she's aggressive, and we needed her tonight, and she, and, and she performed. What, what she does, she makes plays. Uh, she's able to absorb contact, she'll get other people's shots. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it's her minutes are going to improve. There's no question about it. And she's, you know, as I tell them, when somebody else's minutes go up, that means somebody's minutes is going to go down. You know, you you got to come to practice and compete every single day. Our jobs as coaches is to put the best ones out there to give us a chance to win. And right now, 
I was really impressed with what she did. You said you all would learn from this game. What do you think you end up taking away? Well, I, I, I think what you take away from it is just, you know, we, we had a few time and score situations that we, we did not execute, and that's not normal for us. Uh, I, I believe at the end of the first quarter, there's 11 seconds, it's our ball and out of bounds, and we take a quick shot. And now all of a sudden, they, they push it, we foul, and it's two points. Like, those, those are the time and score situations that we have to get better at. You've got to know exactly hey, what's going on. Like, at the, the end of the first half right there, I, I was trying to use as much clock as we could every possession. You know, because I was getting to a point I was hope, hoping my, my five-year-old was here because I was afraid <laughs> I was going to have, have, have to put her in the game. <laughs> you know, so I'm sitting here going, hey, we got to just use as much clock as we can to limit the possessions for Notre Dame. And, you know, we're up seven, and we end, end, end up going in up two. But and I've got kids on the floor that, that haven't played a whole bunch. But because of the foul trouble, we had no choice. So, so you're, you're, you're saying you, you, play, you can't worry about, about fouling out and have, have to keep playing. But is there, what, what's the balance that they need to strike, like an Evans or Carter, in terms of being responsible when, when they are playing with two or three fouls? Well, you know, I mean, you've you, you got to be a play. You can't just let somebody drive to the basket and score on you. Every time, I mean, there, there is, there's no sense to be out there, and that, that, that that's why I tell them, like, guys, you've got to keep playing. You can't pick up silly fouls. And I'm looking forward to going back and, and watching the game and trying, trying to figure out, okay, what can we do to get better? What can we do to get better with to, to not foul? Uh, because it really put us in a bad spot there, there in the first half. Is that a personnel thing more than anything? Just their power inside. Well, I mean, you know, with. Uh, Brianna Turner back. It's you know she was play, uh, a player of the year with Myisha. My, my her they're they're both their sophomore years. I think uh, Myisha was coach's player of the year. Brianna was uh, m media play, player of the year. So you've got a player of the year candidate back on the team, and then you add her with Jess, who uh, you know just is, is a big time player, and now they've got the size in the post, and that's just but it's things that we can talk about. It's what we 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 talk to our players about. You've got to be able to find somebody, turn and put a body on somebody, and you've got to rebound the ball in front of you. That, that, that's been our challenge. That's what we've been trying to work on. We try to rebound the ball above us. But the problem is when you're not the, tall, the tallest one out there, it's not a good recipe for success. You've got to box out and rebound the ball out in front of you instead of above you because you're not going to get it. And that's really what took place tonight. And those are things that we, we, we've been working on and work, work it a little better. Beyond technique, though, do you see size as a potentially fatal flaw for your team? Now, you know what? Everybody's been saying that for the 12, the 12 years I've been here. You know, you don't have 6'5". You know, I can, I, I, can go, I can go get a 6'5 bad player. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you're 6'5 and bad, it doesn't matter. You know, if you're six foot and bad, you're still bad. You know, so my thing is we try and we're going to continue to recruit good players that have good size. But we've had a lot of success here. I mean... Maish Hines Allen was six foot two, and I think anybody would have taken her. You know, Sarah Hammond was a part of our thir our thirteen team at six two. You know, we've had a lot of success with players that can play inside out. You know, right now, Bianca she's getting better and better. But like, what, what we got to get her to get a little bit better at is being able to make that ten to twelve foot shot, <coughs> which then stretches out the defense. So no, I'm not. It's like I told our kids. It, it's a two-point game. With I mean, I'm not sure what what a minute forty or whatever left. I mean, size didn't seem to bother us then. Jeff, historically speaking, do you notice a huge difference in your team after playing a major marquee matchup, which I know you guys have had historically the last few years? No, I mean it's just uh, it, kid, kids were excited to play. I mean, I, I, I was excited to coach. I thought the crowd was great, you know, and uh, now it's a matter of. You, no matter what, I told them, no matter what happens tonight, we got plenty on Sunday. You know, everybody talks about oh, it's one versus two, it's the biggest game of the year. No, it's not. It's a big game. But the biggest games of the year come in March when you lose and you're finished. That's the biggest game of the year. No matter what took place tonight, we're playing on Sunday. And now we've got to get our focus shifted because our league is as good as it's been in the six years that we've been in it from top to bottom. You know, Boston College just went and won at Wake Forest. Virginia just beat Virginia Tech. 
you know, it, so if if you don't come prepared to play, if we don't come to prepared to play Georgia Tech on Sunday, we'll lose at home. So that's what makes this league so good right now. Coach Arike has Arike Ogumbawale has just four points in the first half, which is with thirty. Just from your perspective, what was she able to do in the second half? Oh, she she made some big time shots, and then, you know, we started to not be as aggressive D defensively. We allowed her to get the ball in the scoring area, and then she she had a couple couple big time shots. You know, the one three, the step back she makes it. It's it's, it's a big time shot. You know, and then, you know, I think she may have had six or eight there at the free throw line. You know, with a minute left. But overall, I thought I thought we did a really nice job in the first half. Uh, but we've got to eliminate some silly fouls so I can keep the kids on the floor that can defend her on the floor. And unfortunately, we weren't able to do that tonight in the second half. I appreciate everybody. Thank you. Thank you.